folks, and welcome back to Bougie Comfort Food. I'm your hostess, Mary Landry, and I am going to show you today how to make the easiest barbecue brisket you've ever made in your life. Now, I am sure there are folks out there who are going to say, oh my God, like I spice rub mine with my homemade spice blend and throw it on the grill. Great. That works great if you have the time for that. However, Today, we've got doctor's appointments and everything else going on, and I'm going to show you a really easy way to make a barbecue brisket in your crock pot, and it's no muss, no fuss, no worries. Now, this particular way to do this, you are going to have to turn that beef over about midway through so that the top doesn't get too crusty, okay? Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, brisket, that's the worst cut of meat there is. That's dog food. No, it's not. Brisket is lovely if you know what to do with it. And today, I'm going to show you how. So, this meal today is actually going to be a birthday dinner for my best friend, Randy Shaver, one of my lovely subscribers and my wonderful roommate. And um, he loves this one. We're going to do a barbecue brisket sandwich. But to start that, you have to have the barbecue brisket. So, I am just cutting open that brisket bag. Now, be aware, especially if you've frozen your brisket ahead of time, that it's going to need to be drained of all the blood in that bag. And it can get messy. Now, what I'm going to do... Get all that blood out and throw that big bad boy onto my cutting board. Now, I know you're thinking this is a lot of beef. Now, here's the trick to all of this. You're going to cut off a piece that you feel will fit easily in your crock pot. And you kind of want to fill it up. So, we're going to saw down through there. Now, if you have an electric knife... You can actually freeze this and cut through it a lot easier than what I'm doing. Mine was frozen ahead of time and I had to thaw it, but that's okay. We like beef in this house. So I'm going to be making um, a few interesting more dishes. Um, I'm going to try my hand in the next few days of making a pho bowl. And that is a soup. A Vietnamese style soup that is made with thinly sliced pieces of beef if you choose beef and it's got um, vegetables and noodles and it's done in a vegetable broth but that one's going to be one for the channel on a later date when I know that I can do it without screwing it up you know okay so you'll notice in the in the brisket, there is a huge fat rind on there. Now, if you're barbecuing this, that fat rind is fine. You can leave it there. But for this, we're going to try to take it down. And all you do is get you a little cut started. And basically, it will pretty much peel back. Now, you're going to go in there and you're going to trim this beef. Because in the crock pot, all that fat will just turn gelatinous. So we don't want that in our brisket. Because who wants to bite into the globular fat? Ugh. Anyway, so we're just rendering this down. Like I said, we're going to take that fat rind off. And I'm trying to get as close to the beef without taking any away. Now you're going to get a few pieces that have little little ribbons of beef on it, and that's fine. My dogs love that. Because, yes, brisket sometimes is fed to dogs as natural dog food. And my dogs think a brisket coming in this house is fantastic because they get goodies. So, like I said, we're rendering that fat rind down. It does take a little bit of time, folks. This is not an easy process, but trust me, it is so worth it. Now, to make this brisket, other than the beef, you only need two ingredients. And those two ingredients are 
a barbecue sauce, okay? That barbecue sauce can be any barbecue sauce you like. If you like some fancy high-end barbecue sauce, feel free, babies. But for me, I just use a generic original barbecue sauce. It's easy, it's cheap, and um, when you buy these briskets in this size, like I said, you can usually get a roast or a barbecue brisket out of it, and you can get stew meat out of it. And I actually like to cut um, steaks that I call faux New York strips because basically they look like a New York strip, and if you marinate it, they're as tender as one. So, barbecue briskets, I mean, uh, you see these things in the store, these uh, briskets in the store, and they can be pretty daunting looking because they're a huge slab of beef with a lot of fat. Now, I believe this particular one may have come from Sam's Club, you know, big box store. No, we are not sponsored by anyone. So, I try not to say their names too loudly in case they decide they want to come for me, because you know. But anyway, um, so as I stated in this video, this is gonna become barbecue brisket sandwiches for my family. And um, they, they just are so tender and so delicious. And we usually put it on a bun, a toasted bun, and um, I do coleslaw as the vegetable matter on it. So it's a little different and might be a little strange to some folks, but you know, if you don't like coleslaw, that's okay. You can, you can uh, not dress these at all. You could just put a piece of cheese on them. It's really, really easy. It's very forgiving. And if you just want a traditional barbecue sandwich, you don't have to put anything on it. Eat it as is. But these make a fantastic pulled beef sandwich. So I like to do them and that's what I like to do with them. So as I said, we're gonna keep taking as much of the fat out of this as we can because like I said, it will not be pretty inside of it. It will not render down to something delicious. It will just be globular fat. And I don't want that. So, it takes a little bit of surgery to get this going. But once you do, once you've got it all rendered down, it's very easy from there. Now, also, in addition to that barbecue sauce I mentioned, and like I said, if you choose to make your own and be ambitious, go right ahead. Um, I just use a jar or cans of uh, bottled sauce and uh, make it happen. And what you're going to want and what's going to make this tender, you know, whenever you're cooking a tough cut of meat, the thing that makes it tender is to add an acid to it. And the acid that we're going to add to this is one half bottle of apple cider vinegar. Now you could add regular vinegar if you don't have the apple cider, but it really does work better in my opinion and taste more like a, a pulled beef if you use apple cider vinegar. Plus it has lots and lots of health benefits for you and we'll just not go into all the homeopathy on it, but apple cider is a good thing for us. So cooking with it, you get some of that benefit. All right, we are almost done rendering this beef. Now you wanna turn it around. You wanna get any deep veins out of there that you can. You leave a little bit of fat because the fat is the flavor. And I know some of y'all are thinking, ah, beef fat, yeah, okay. But that is your flavor in there. So, like I said, we're just gonna Take that fat rind down. Now see that big old rind on the back side of this? You're gonna see that in the store. And yes, you are paying for fat, but I will tell you that fat does not weigh as much as muscle does. So just take heart. 
in that it's not taking up a bunch of the weight of your beef. Now, as you can see, I've got a little bit of beef on that one, but that's okay. My dogs are going to enjoy that greatly. Now, I do not give them all of this at once. And uh, I just give them little tidbits on their food for the next few days. Um, don't overload your dog with fresh beef. If you're going to do that, don't give them their dog food. Um, because that's just a little much for them. And you will have a dog who is irking up stuff. And that's no fun for anybody. All right. We are getting there. We are getting there. Like I said, if you have a silver skin that shows, you want to try to peel that silver skin out of there. Now, silver skin literally has a sheen to it. Luckily, I'm not seeing one in mine. I just see little bits of fat that I want to take off. But if you do have a silver skin, you do want to take that out of there. All you have to do to take out a silver skin is slip your knife underneath that silver skin and just pull the tip of your knife and you pull it away with your fingers. Okay. Now, like I said, you are going to have a little bit of work on this one. And I know you're thinking, wow, why didn't you cut away and just save us some of the trouble? Well, because some of this you need to see. But, so, talking about birthdays, today is my best friend's 57th birthday, and he and I have been friends for 28 years. 28, folks. Does anybody out there have a friendship that's lasted so long? If you have, let me know in the comments. Um, as always, if you like the content of this video, give us a like. And if this is something that you think you might want to see in the future, more recipes like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Once you do that, hit that notification bell, and it will let you know every time we upload something new. And we do have plenty of recipes coming up. And uh, my surprise recipe, we are going to be filming two today. My surprise recipe for today is going to be Randy's birthday cake. Now, Randy, in case I have not shared this with anyone, is a diabetic. So we try to cut down on sugars and things like that. And he is a heart patient. So, you know, we try to cut down as much fat as we can and salt and all that good jazz. Now, this meal does not hit any of those buttons. I'm just going to tell you. It's fatty. It's salty. It's delicious. But, you know, we have a splurge day for our birthday, and he's been eating salads, gearing up for this. So, he's been a good boy. He gets a treat. All right. We are almost there, and we're going to take that big fat rind off the back side of this in just one moment after I cut out a particularly hard piece of fat here in the middle here. Now... You heard me say that I was going to take the rest of that brisket and cut it up and make steaks and uh, use it for stew meat and things like that. That is a perfect, excellent use for it. And as long as you're going to either marinate or cook it for a long time in a liquid, it will render down and it will be delicious. Um, brisket is an unsung hero in the beef world, in my opinion. And... Uh, for those of you who are on a budget, a brisket about this size is about $35. Now, you may be thinking, wow, that's a lot. But I'm going to get three meals out of this brisket. So, when you do the cost analysis on that, three meals only breaks down to about $10, $12 a meal. And that makes this brisket a heck of a lot more productive and cost efficient. So, we've been buying briskets for a very long time, and we've been making this particular meal for a very long time, which is why I suggested it for his birthday dinner. And he doesn't have to cook it, so that makes it even better, right? Now, I know a lot of people are saying, y'all are going out for dinner, y'all not doing this. Yeah, not everybody's in that budget brain. And like I said, plus we have doctor's appointments and 
going out for a fancy meal is all well and good, but I don't have all that time in my day today. He already opened up his gift for the day, his birthday gift for me and Kat, and it was the Warriors Ultimate Director's Cut Edition on Blu-ray. Now he uh, asserts that where the notebook is the book for, is the movie for women, the Warriors is the guy movie of the day. So he uh, he asserts that is the ultimate guy movie. Now I'm sure some of y'all may disagree with him. Don't come at him in his comment in the comments. He is the birthday boy, so we're going to give him that one for today. He'll we'll let him say that for today. All right, y'all can see I am pulling huge chunks of fat out, but that's okay. Like I said, fat is flavor, but we just don't want a ton of it. Because like I said, this hard fat, and you can tell the difference in the texture when you're cutting and when you feel it. If it's hard fat, cut that hard fat out of there because that's not going to be good eating for you. Fred is down here at my feet. Fred the cat, our producer, is down here at our feet. His associate producer, our new uh, addition to the household, is uh, currently, I think, flopped on my bed, sleeping on my pillow specifically. Our new addition is a 150-pound four-year-old pit bull rescue, and her name is Lovey. And she is exactly that. She is a lovey-dovey. She is a sweet, very sweet dog. Um, I never imagined I would be a pit bull owner. And uh, that's okay. Life sometimes throws us a curveball we weren't expecting. But I'll tell you, this curveball is super sweet. She just uh, is a moose. And... Uh, Abigail the dog is over there sleeping deep in her bed. She uh, came in here and figured there was goodies coming out in their way because she knows what brisket means. We've done it before. Whew. Work up a sweat doing this puppy. Give me one minute. Let me uh, rinse the hands off a little bit and wipe my brow. And wash my hands again. So I'm just going to leave that water running. Now, like I said, it's a lot of work, but this meal is totally worth it. Totally worth it. All right, wash, wash those hands real good with antibacterial dial again. Now, you could use gloves to do this, but I find I can get a better grip on it if I'm down in there with my fingers. So. All right. Like I said, we are almost there. Almost there. I'm going to just throw that little piece of beef that came off into my crock pot. Because it won't matter that it's a little tongue of beef. It will go right on in there. So, as I said, there are lots of things you can do with a brisket, and a lot of people barbecue it, especially here in Texas. They think I'm committing blasphemy by putting it in my crock pot. But uh, I do know how to barbecue a brisket on the, on the uh, grill, and at some point, we will take you out to the pool area, which is where our barbecue pits are, and uh, show you how to barbecue things. Um, we have a rack of lamb that we're gonna do, and I have some lovely uh, tuna steaks that I'm gonna show y'all how to grill very, very soon. All right, so we're gonna get into this last bit of fat, which is the back fat. Now, like I said, this does come from a portion of the cow that's pretty fatty. So you really have to work on that fat and get as much of it off of there as you can. 
because it just will not turn out nicely. And, you know, who wants to bite in a big blob of fat? Ugh. All right, let's get at it from the other end. Okay, so, um, I know that um, I have some wonderful viewers out there, loyal viewers, and I currently have 17 wonderful subscribers. I would love to thank you all by name, but unfortunately I don't have my phone in front of me, so I can't do that right now. But everyone who subscribes, thank you. Thanks a million times, thanks. Because you are helping us get things out there. And when you like a video, it helps people see the video. And I'm hopeful that uh, some folks are gonna see this video and get excited and uh, join us here for the fun. Now, sometimes when, uh, when you have beef, a piece of it will dry out and brown. You wanna cut that off. Um, you can see that piece right here. You wanna cut that off because that is um, just where it dried out after they cut it. And especially if you froze it, it uh, will get a texture that is not pleasant. So we're just gonna take it on down and like I said, you know, um, you will see beef on the back side of this fat because nobody can trim it perfectly. And I don't have the best uh, filleting knife to do this. Um, it does work better with a fillet knife, but you can use a butcher knife. And I have a serrated butcher here. So, serrated chef's knife here. So, like I said, we are almost done with this project this part of the project. You're just gonna take all that fat off of there, work your way down it. I wanted to show everybody, because normally we cut away when I'm doing all of this, but I wanted to show everybody how to render down this uh, brisket so that you have an idea of how to do it and what to look for. And I can't tell you that just by after the fact say, oh, by the way, if it's hard fat, take it out. Well, I could tell you that, but you might not get a chance to see it and know what hard fat means. We are almost there, guys. We are almost there. So, I hope that some of you have had chances to see some of our other videos. We do have quite a few up. Um, of course, our first was Mongolian beef. And uh, we did that one about a year ago, in fact. Um, we are coming up on our year anniversary of doing bougie comfort food. Now, I always tell people this is a comfort food with an upscale uh, twist, and uh, that's kind of what we're doing here. Um, today's barbecue beef sandwich, we're gonna, once we dress it, it's gonna be dressed with that coleslaw. And I'm gonna take this big hunk off so that I can work some more and I don't have to fight it. I left myself a handhold. You can see this fat's kind of stringy and stuck to the muscle. You definitely want to get that fat off. That stringy fat just uh, makes you feel like you're biting gristle. Now, in case anybody doesn't know what gristle is, gristle is the veins, the hard fat, or stringy fat, and uh, they're just not very tasty or fun. So, now we are uh, working hard here, gonna get it all done. I've got one little section left to do. 
And um, I'm just going to wipe my hands off a little bit. They're getting a little slick. Okay. Um, you can always see how I can grab it now. You can always slide the tip of your knife in. Cut away from yourself, please, because uh, we don't want that emergency room visit. And we just come on through and get her going. So um, I know that other people may have um, different things that they do with brisket that I don't do. All right, we cut away for a second because I had to wash off my knife. It was getting a little clogged uh, with beef and fat. So now that we are back, we are gonna finish uh, rendering out this beef, getting this fat rind off. Now I have a lot of people who um, have tried my beef and uh, this particular uh, barbecue brisket and really enjoy it. Um, they always like to know when I'm going to cook it next and come over for dinner. But as this is a birthday dinner and we're going to be watching the Warriors tonight, um, we did not invite anybody over for dinner. If we had, I would have planned a game night for Randy instead of watching the Warriors because he and I and Kat are role play gamers. Um, my particular most favorite game is Call of Cthulhu. Um, it is a role-playing game, pen and paper game, that is based on the works of H.P. Lovecraft. Um, the creatures in it are uh, creatures in H.P. Lovecraft. Randy's favorite game is Dungeons and Dragons. Yep just like in Stranger Things. He is one of the Hellfire Club members. And I tell you, I'm so tempted to get us t-shirts. He and I, at least. Kat probably wouldn't wear one. It might be too geeky for her. And she's not a Stranger Things fan. She actually has not watched the show. But Randy and I are huge Stranger Things fans. And uh, he is... He said that was him in high school, playing D&D &D and having a good time. Um, I, too, in high school, played D&D. &D. I was a member of the uh, Science Fiction and Fantasy Gaming Club at uh, McKinley High School. And uh, we were a pretty motley crew. Um bunch of gifted and talented kids playing D&D &D on the weekends and whatnot. And during club day, I don't know how they convinced the teacher to agree to be the sponsor of that club. Or maybe the teacher played. I don't know. I don't remember. We never actually played on club day because it wasn't time. Playing a good game of D&D &D is a three, four, six, twenty hour episode thing to do. Um, I hope that, uh, that D&D &D will uh, find its resurgence after being featured on Stranger Things. We'll see. You know, I'm sure uh, a whole new uh, generation of gamers will have seen it on Stranger Things and wondered what it is and wander into their local game store. Our particular local game store, um, there's a few, but the one that we uh, custom go to, um, give our business to, is Etten Games in Humble. Um, shout out to Etten. No, they don't sponsor anything. Um, but we have a good time there. There is a uh, role-playing RPG game day. Um, it is something that happens yearly. Um, I think that day has already passed. Randy might be able to tell me more. Randy? Has RPG Day passed? Yes. RPG Day has passed. So you missed it for this year. But it is something to know about. Um, they frequently have people who run games. And um, they, uh, 
They will give you a taste for RPG games. Uh, sometimes the stores will uh, loan you dice if you don't have your own dice. And of course you can buy dice sets there. Um, we come in with a big thing of dice, big bag of dice every time. I actually bought my favorite dice bag I've ever owned there. Um, but I will tell you, you can spot an old school gamer by one thing. An old school gamer, someone who's been doing it for the longest or was raised with it, as the case might be, because my sons both played role-playing games with us. Um, old school gamers, uh, they didn't make fancy schmancy dice bags back in the day. So old school gamers can be spotted by the crown royal bag full of dice that they carry. That is, uh, I don't know why crown royal bags were the thing. I guess just because they came free with the liquor. And uh, they became dice bags for gamers. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, some people do run their games and uh, drink along with it and have a good time. Some DMs and GMs, Dungeon Masters and Game Masters, um, do not allow drinking at their games because it can get ridiculous. But, you know, to each their own. Um... I know that uh, I have uh, played with beginning players, experienced players, ridiculously experienced players, and just ridiculous gamers in my lifetime. My late husband was one of those people who is a ridiculous gamer. He's going to get the most power mad uh, uh, character he can, decked out with everything under the sun. Um, and Randy tells a story of a guy he gamed with once that had a world splitting sword and the guy said I need two of them and he jokingly asked the guy why because in case one breaks he goes exactly yeah um, there are many gaming systems out there um, one system that I have always been a fan of is GURPS. Uh, generic, what does it stand for, Randy? Generic? Generic Universal Role Playing System. Generic Universal Role Playing System. Says everything in the name, don't it, doesn't it, folks? It's, uh, it's a pretty good system. For the longest time, it was either, a, you know, a system that you ran... Uh, to run other games. A lot of games were based on that system um, because it was a base 10 system and uh, just makes things easier. Yep, they metricized the game system, right? Okay, but um, that system was really good and then they came across with a D20 system for uh, Dungeons and Dragons and various other games and D20 has kind of taken over the world of gaming um, It does simplify things down a bit But I'm still a fan of the old-school GURP system so Every gamer has their preference um, I quit playing Dungeons and Dragons because of that same late husband. I told you about um, He was ridiculous his characters were ridiculous, and he absolutely ruined Dungeons & Dragons for me. So, it is what it is, will be what it will be, but yeah. My wife um, has only played a few role-playing games, uh, mostly with me, I think. Um, and... Uh, We've, we've rolled up characters for a game that we never got to play because my roommate, my other roommate and Randy's other roommate at the time was a douche. Yep, I said it. But, you know, it is what it is. Like I said, not all gamers are equal. Not all gamers are good. And some of them can be quite douchey. 
I always take a pause when I see a guy roll into the game shop who's going to run a game and he's in a, a what is a trilby that he's calling a fedora. Those are the trilbies are the ones that have a shorter brim on them than a fedora does. Um, and usually they'll roll in with one of those on, maybe a, um, a army surplus jacket, and uh, think they are all that and a bag of chips. And you know that he may or may uh, now I'm not saying everybody who does that where it looks like that as a gamer is a douche, but um, yeah. It has been my experience, more often than not, they are. Now, if your beef ends up with a hole in it, don't panic. It's okay. It's just going in there and it's gonna break down anyway. We are almost ready to throw that big bad boy in our crock pot. As you can see, I am almost done. Got a few pieces of fat to throw out. A Couple of hard pieces I'm trying to trim down a little bit. Make sure that they are not going to impact my beautiful beef. But like I said, you want to leave a little bit of fat on, just not this hard fat. And if it's a very big, squishy plug of it, go ahead and trim that off too. See, I've got a squishy plug right here that we're going to take off. go. Dogs are going to love that. Like I said, I do give uh, the fat and the little scrabbles of meat that's on them to the dogs. You can save it and um, use it to help flavor your broth and give your broth fat, but I wouldn't. Um, if you're going to do that, uh, get you one of those strainers that goes into the pot one of the colanders that goes into the pot that you can steam vegetables in and cover that with, uh, with your broth that you're making. Make sure that it's covered and it will infuse some of that fat into the broth. That's a handy dandy little trick for you. All right, we are almost there literally. As you can see, my beef still has a little bit of fat in it but it does not have these huge hunking things of fat in it that are not going to be lovely. I like to trim it pretty lean. If you like more fat in your um, barbecue brisket and your uh, pulled beef, you are more than welcome to leave more on there. But like I said, I like to trim mine pretty lean because I'd rather have beef than fat in my pot. All right, we're looking pretty good here. So, the next step that we're going to do after I wipe my counter down real well, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to mix up the um, half a bottle of apple cider vinegar with our barbecue sauce. Now, you might be thinking, can I just throw it all in there? Yes, yes, you can. It will eventually cook itself together. But... I like to mix it up into a bowl. Make sure our beef looks good. I'm looking good there. It looks pretty lean. Get little bits that have fallen off. Throw the fat in the sink so that I can put it in a Ziploc for the dogs. There we go. And slide that off to the side. Let me wash my hands real quick, folks. And I've got about a gallon size Ziploc full of uh, fat for the dogs. So they're going to be excited for the next three or four days. Um, you do want to use that up in the next three or four days if that's what you're going to do with your fat. Um, you don't want to get food poisoning to your dog. That's not going to be a fun day for you. You're going to be cleaning up a lot of stuff uh -uh, that you don't want to. So, now that we've got all that done, we're going to come over here blood and the yuck off my counter. Now I do use antibacterial spray after I'm done or wipe it down with really hot water and some soap. 
but at the moment we're just mixing in a bowl so it's not going to cross contaminate anything. So you're going to take that bottle of uh, barbecue sauce and dump it out into a bowl. Now I know you're thinking, why can't I just do it in barbecue sauce? Well, trust me, this vinegar helps render that down. Now barbecue sauce does have vinegar in it. Try to get all the goodness out of there. We're going to put a lid on it and leave it upside down for a minute, and I'll probably get about another two tablespoons worth on the sides. Okay, so we got our barbecue sauce in a bowl, and we are going to take half a bottle, and you can see the bottle's pretty big, of apple cider vinegar. And we're just going to pour it all in there. Okay. Got to buy more apple cider vinegar. That goes on my list, my grocery list for the month. Okay. And we're going to mix all that in. And what you're going to kind of do, you can use a whisk or a spoon. I probably should have gotten a whisk. But I'm good with a spoon, so... See how it just kind of makes it look like a liquidy barbecue sauce? That's what you want. Now what you're going to do, the trick here, in my opinion, is you're going to pour a little bit in the bottom, okay? Just enough to cover the, cover the bottom of your crock pot. Ooh, I'm tongue-tied today. Say that three times fast. And then you're going to slide your beef in there. Now your beef, if it's as big as mine, is going to fill that crock pot. I did that on purpose. I want it to be about as even as I can. And then I'm going to take the rest of my mixture and get any clumps you see hanging around on the side. And I'm just going to pour that over my beef. It, would, it is a perfect ratio if your beef is covered. If your beef is not covered, don't panic. It's going to be okay. Um, if your beef is not covered, you'll just need to flip that beef over midway through. Now, I will tell you, I do that anyway. Because once um, it starts cooking, the crock pot cooks pretty much from the bottom. So I want to make sure that that beef is all cooked evenly. So I flip the entire beef over midway through. And I'm just kind of pushing it down in my liquid. And I'm going to turn the lid onto it. Now you're wondering, wait, you didn't put what was left in the bottle. It's okay, I'm still letting it drain. I can do that again before we leave for the doctor's appointment. And you won't be here for that, but just letting you know what we're doing. So. You're gonna take that crock pot now and put it on low. Now, if you need it done sooner, you can put it on high. It will render down and be just fine on high. But if you can put it on low and slow for the day, that is a better idea. So my roast, my brisket roast, is now gonna cook for the next four to six hours on low in that crock pot. So, we will come back to you in about four to six hours, show you what she looks like. Now I am gonna flip it over in about four hours. I find I like to do mine about six, and that beef is gonna literally fall apart. You're gonna need to get a slotted spoon or some sort of slotted thing to pull it out because it is going to fall apart on you. And that's what we want because like I said, we're doing pulled beef sandwiches tonight and we're going to show you how to construct those and everything good. But we will come back to you in about four to six hours when that beef is good and ready. So hang tight. We'll see you then. All right, folks, we're back. Our brisket is done. Now, it has been on for six hours, and as you can see, it's nice and pretty inside. Look at that brisket. Mm. Oh, I'm hungry. I can smell it. Now, what I suggest, you can either put it in a food processor and break it up, 
or you can slice it. Look how pretty and pink that is in there. Ooh, looks perfect. Perfect medium well, or medium, as a lot of folks call it. Now you can put this in a food processor, put some of that uh, juice from the cooking in it, and you can um, make it into pulled beef. Um, I like to do that second day, personally. But first day, you're gonna put some of these slices. I just like to slice it up about, about a quarter inch thick, half inch thick, whatever floats your boat. Whatever floats your goat, right? And just slice that up. Look how tender that is. My knife is just going through it like butter. So, like I said, everybody who says brisket is a tough cut of meat has just not done it right. And the key to making it tender is to add in your apple cider vinegar. That vinegar helps to break down the proteins in the meat and just make it a little bit better. Look at that pretty mink. Oof. Ooh, my hand's cramping on me. Sorry about that. I've been driving all day. So, uh, my hands have about had it for the day. I think uh, I got a touch of arthritis starting up in them. You know, we're not as young of a chicken as we used to be. Not a spring chicken anymore. So, you're gonna take this and slice it into slabs. Now you could eat this with mashed potatoes and gravy, or even mashed potatoes and put that au jus from the um, crock pot in there. You could, like I said, put it into a food processor and grind it up and have a, um, now I still have half of this in the crock pot, so this isn't all of it, this was the smaller half. We were just trying to get something on a plate for dinner tonight. But you could do it with mashed potatoes and some green beans or corn. You could do it a hundred different ways. But the way we like to eat it is barbecue brisket sandwiches. So I've toasted some buns. I'll put one on my plate here. Toasted some buns. We're gonna lay a couple of big slabs of beef on there. Now, here's the trick. And some of you will probably giggle when you see this. Especially those folks from New Orleans, because y'all know we soak everything down there in sauce. I just take a little bit of this barbecue sauce that's in here, that we've cooked that meat in, and just kind of put about a tablespoon's worth on there so it soaks into my bun a little bit. Now we have King's Hawaiian buns or what we chose to have tonight with these. Now, after you put that on, I um, make up coleslaw. Now I like Kraft's coleslaw dressing, but you can have any coleslaw dressing you want, okay? You just put some of that coleslaw. Oh, and the trick I like to do, because I like, I've always liked uh, Popeye's coleslaw. So I put pepper, cracked pepper into mine. So I fancy it up a little bit. So you're gonna add in some coleslaw in there, and that's gonna be your sandwich. And then a little bit of, uh, I didn't have time today to make my potato salad, so we're gonna make do with some mustard potato salad. Big, nice helping of that. Now, doesn't that look like a good dinner, folks? All righty. So, for those of you who thought that making some barbecue brisket was gonna be hard and super time consuming, the only time consuming it is is the time it takes in that crock pot to cook. So, if you've enjoyed this recipe, consider giving us a like, hit that subscribe button, Hit the notification bell and you'll know every time we upload a video. So if you like something like this or what's coming up in next week's episode, we actually have it sitting here on the counter. You want to get a shot of that, Miss Cheshire Cat? 
That is our double chocolate cake, and this one is a sugar-free version. Um, it's made with monk fruit sweetener, and that one will come up next week on your feed. So uh, if you hit that notification bell, you'll know when that one posts. Tease. So, what? Tease. <laughs> right? Okay, guys. Um, and uh, also, we're going to be using some of this brisket I have in here. Um, the next episode we're going to film, which will be two episodes from now, from you being able to view it, is going to be brisket loaded baked potatoes. Now, you may be thinking, whoo, well, you're going to think it because we're going to make it. I'm going to go to the store tomorrow and pick up some big baking potatoes and all the fixings that go with it. And I'm going to show you how to make those brisket stuffed potatoes. All right, guys. So from Abby the dog, Fred the cat, and our new addition to the house, Lovey the pit bull, and all of us here at Bougie Comfort Food, I'm Mary Landry, my wife, Cheshire Cat. And the birthday boy who's going to enjoy this delicious dinner tonight, Mr. Randy Shaver, happy 57th birthday to you today on July 14th. I hope that he has many more birthdays that we get to celebrate good eats like this. So, from all of us, have a fantastic rest of your day, and we hope that the rest of your week is just as great. Y'all take care now. And we hope to see you again. Bye now. Save a place for